a wing a what a wing a what a wing a what a wing a what oh hi didn't see you there my name's Avril R32 did you know that vaping can deliver toxic metals like nickel and lead into your balls that's metal in your balls i'm hard Destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can get to 900 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. I did just hump the air. Yes, we are wearing this hat for the rest of this video because we are hard and our anus is not relaxed. So smash that subscribe button so that our anus can be relaxed. So let's talk about tactical master piss stains, everybody, because I got to tell you right now, that set is a bucket of booty booty butt cheeks. We have not said that on the channel in a while. I've been waiting to save it for when we do another meta tier list whenever we eventually get this damn ban list that needs to drop uh, very soon, I hope to God. Um, according to that email that we got from that Konami employee, apparently it's August 29th, September 1st. I don't know, pimp. But anyway, Tactical Masters is a pile of dirty, sweaty, just got out of the gym, sweat butt, booty booty butt cheeks. And here's the reason why. When you look at other side sets, especially something like the Grand Creation, you know, we had the Brave Engine in that set. And the thing is, yes, the Brave Engine is very difficult to shoot above, but even besides the Brave Engine, we had other decent cards in the Grand Creators that really helped shape the meta. What do we have in Tactical Masters? Even on the Collector's Rare level, we have Drool and Lockbird, which just looks better as an Ultimate Rare. We have Cosmic Cyclones, which also look better as an Ultimate Rare. And then we have Collector's Rare Anti-Spells, which are cool, I guess, and that's it. The only thing that Tactical Masters really offers outside of a Droll and Lockbird reprint, Cosmic reprint, and an Anti-Spell reprint, which if you already have those cards and they're not beneficial to, you, beneficial to you anyway, is the Runic support. I've seen some people talking about the Labyrinth and the Valiance monsters, but really the Valiants aren't all that great from what I've seen. The Labyrinth stuff is just sort of eh. They, I think that they have a lot of room to improve. And the Runic stuff, even then, aka Mr. Rune and the OCG, even then, the runic stuff just doesn't seem to be all that great, right? You know, I mean, you can combine it with Sky Strikers, but even then, there are other things that you can combine with Sky Striker to make it even better, even though it's being held up by duct tape and glue and <laughs> Mystic Mine. Sorry, I had something in my throat. <laughs> but, like, why would you play those cards when there's just other cards that are inherently better than the runic stuff? Yes, it's cool to mill out your opponent, but you have to keep in mind that you can't really be aggressive with that stuff, which is why I don't really agree with combining it with Sky Strikers, because with Sky Strikers, you at least have high to be able to poke direct, you know, against the opponent. If they have a monster, you can use it to dump like an engage, use Kagari to get engaged and start making plays. You can use the Widow Anchor to take the opponent's monster, mess up their board, things like that. But with the Runics, you have to skip your battle phase. And the way that it works right now, how that it, how it's ruled from what I understand is that if you skip your battle phase, you can't go into your main phase too. So all the things that you want to do when you're playing the Runic cards, if you're on a battle phase skip turn, is that you got to do everything in your draw, stand by in your main phase. Because once you go to battle phase, it's going to skip that. You can't go to main phase too because you technically didn't have a battle phase and you're going to go straight to end phase. So I feel that running just pure Runics is going to be the best way to go. On top of that, we don't have the fusion, the last fusion monster, I mean to say, that we still need to get because that's in Darkwing Blast. Now, that fusion monster doesn't necessarily make Runics like tier zero or anything, but you want as much support that the deck can have out of the gate. And I really feel like the only way that the Runic cards are really going to be played is like they're spell and trap destruction stuff. Like they have one that pops a spell or trap and then banishes the top four. That's going to be played in like stall decks and even Mystic Mind burn stuff while Mystic Mind is still legal. Hopefully it gets banned soon because it's just a better version of MST. Like, yeah, you got to skip your battle phase, but these decks that never fucking attack anyway don't really give a rat's ass. You know what I mean? They're just going to get a free pop of a spell or trap on a fucking quick play and then banish the top four of your decks that you have even and less resources. So in something like Mystic Mind Burn, if they're hitting you in the nuts with Goddess Scold, then they hit you with that Spell or Trap pop thing, the Mr. Rune, the Runic Destruction, and then banish the top four. Well, now they just banished the top four cards off your deck. The, those first three could potentially all be Spell and Trap removal to go against the Mystic Mind player that you just stacked on top with Goddess Scold or that they did against you. And so... It begs the question, why would you even invest in this set? I mean, are Valiants really that worth it? And I've had people try and tell me, Avery Astrograph Sorcerer is reprinted. I don't give a fuck about Astrograph. I mean, you can make that thing an ultimate shiny prismatic secret rare with 
one little boo-boo stain on it and like have it go for $2,000, I'm not going to care. Like I'm not a pendulum player. And then of course I've seen some people say, oh, this means electromites come back. I don't think electromites ever come back, but that's besides the point. Um, you know, it, th there's nothing really pushing this set. And it, it really sucks too that like it's not going to be legal for YCS Brazil because of Latin America distribution and things like that. I guess they're just not going to have access to that set at that point. Um, because it would be interesting to see what, if anything, people do with the set. Uh, because again, Valiants just don't seem all that good. Labyrinths are kind of whatever. Runix, I, like I said, I even made a video talking about how Mr. Runes don't seem all that great. And I feel like it's just because of the fact that they need more to get there. Like they have one continuous spell and they have a monster that searches you a runic spell in your grave that's not a quick play so either the field spell or the continuous spell those are your only fucking choices like i feel that they need more going for them if they actually want to stand a chance do i think that they'll get better once we have magnificent mavens and we get that ishizu exchange of the spirit mill support i think so because i think that i mean granted in general, at face value, I think tier elements will be a tier zero deck once we get that stuff, because that stuff is just fucking bananas. Um, but having that mill support in there with the banishing mill off of Runix, I think could be a very, very interesting setup when it comes to building Runix. Now, do I think that, you know, Runix are going to be a troll deck? Maybe, but again, why would someone troll you with that when there are just better alternatives? Like they could be playing Mystic Mind Burn until it gets banned. They could be playing a different troll deck that just gets better results. Because to be honest with you, from the testing I've done, it's really only good if it opens up well going first. And even then, like they're not always going to open well. And on top of that too, you have to keep in mind that whenever you look at OCG results of Runic, they had at the time three Monster Gate and three Reasoning. So they would play things like Invoked and just focus on getting out Invoked Kali Yuga, which is the one that locks both players into one monster effect activation, one monster attack each battle phase for each turn. So you could sit on that 1800 defense or even 1000 attack if you have an Alistair in hand, uh, Kali Yuga to bump it up to 2000 off the Alistair. And then you could use Monster Gate and Reasoning to tribute your Alistairs or fusion monsters and thin your deck through all of the runic spells and get them in the grave for the runic spring fountain field spell. So every turn you just play a runic spell, put three on the bottom, draw three, and then you're never really decking out. Plus you have the invocation engine with Alistair and then you're able to get to fusions that way. Could we maybe see that in our meta? Possibly, but again, keep in mind, we don't have three monster game. We don't have three reasoning. We've got one of each. So if you're going to play one of each in a 40 card deck, that's not a very high chance that you're going to get to it. At least if it was three and three, you had a higher chance of drawing into it. Plus you're using the Mr. Rune spells to filter through your deck, whether you're searching off of uh point of the Mr. Rune, I think is it's what it's called. You have terraforming, you know, you have other ways to thin through your deck and to get to those power plays. Um, so it's, it's really up in the air with what I think is going to happen. Now, as an investment, should you invest in this set? No, absolutely fucking not. I would not be touching the set with a 10 foot pole. If there's anything you want out of the set, I don't give a damn if it's collector's rares. I don't give a damn if it's ultra rares just deck cores whatever if you want a core of like let's say runix wait because already when i checked earlier today you could get a core on tcg player for roughly about 150 bucks maybe a little bit more a little bit less depending on shipping and taxes things like that i would say really if you wait probably about a week from the time this video is posted you could probably get a runic core at cheapest like 100 bucks three of everything you've got it sitting there and it gets shipped to your front door and you've got that core sitting there in case the prices go up because I mean, to be honest, I really don't think that the Runic cards are going to get any sort of reprints anytime soon. I mean, hell, the Adventure stuff still hasn't gotten a fucking reprint. And it's interesting, too, to be looking at the set as a whole, because I think really this is comparable to something like Genesis Impact, because I think that this is one of the worst side sets, one of the worst sets in general that we've seen in Yu-Gi-Oh! in a long time. Like, a lot of people thought Genesis Impact was booty booty butt cheeks, but... You know, we had good collector's rares in there. We had Nightmare Unicorn and Phoenix as collector's rare. We had the fucking Evil Twin stuff get premiered. Like, there was good stuff in that set. The reason why people said it was ass was because at the time, COVID had just started. Logan Paul was busting a load on the Pokemon community, getting 
all these Charizards and shit. And people are like, ooh, I want to make money too. So then everybody dumped into the Yu-Gi-Oh community, bought out all the Genesis Impactor shit, and now people have still lost their ass years later on that. Like, boxes are what? 45, 50 bucks a piece? Because no one wants to fucking touch it. It's something that you should buy a case of and sit on, though, I believe. But there's not really any good money cards in there. Like, I think there was the Drytron stuff in there too, and Drytrons aren't really doing much now. They're a good Rogue pick, I think, overall. Good Tier 2 pick. But, you know, you're not going to be seeing it, you know, win a YCS anytime soon, I feel. So I really feel that this set is worse than Genesis Impactors because at least in Genesis Impactors, you got Drytron, Evil Twins, good-ass collector. Rare. This stuff, you get reprints for collector's rares for the most part, minus a couple other, like, new premiere stuff. And I don't give a fuck. I don't, bleh, I can't even talk to it. I don't give a fuck about the runic stuff being collector's rare because then you're just paying too much money for a shitty archetype. <laughs> so, guys, please, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Be sure that you're subscribed and hitting that notification bell. Spread the news of the channel around. I really want to get to 1,000 subscribers for the end of the year, and we are on track to do that according to my social blade. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.